How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. A lot of you have asked me about my grid tie inverter setup because last time when I talked about it, I didn't cover exactly the schematic layout of everything, how you connect every little piece. So today I'm gonna to cover all of that as well as what I noticed using this system for the past few months. And some of you had the concern that if utility workers turn off the power and they think the power is not live and then the solar energy is coming down, that this grid tie inverter is gonna feed power back into the power lines and possibly electrocute people that are working on it even though they think the power lines are off. I went and tested this and it does turn itself off, but I'm gonna show you that it does turn itself off. So I brought the whole system over here onto my table and I'm just gonna describe it to you, show you guys this first. So here's the setup, it's really dead simple. Over here are the power cables coming from the solar cells. Two cables, I doubled them up so there's half the resistance. This is the positive terminal, negative terminal, and there are actually two panels wired in series, so it's actually a 24 volt uh, system over here. And this is a 500 watt grid tie inverter. You can see that it's powered on right now on green because uh, the solar cells are active right now and it's feeding power back into my wall. Over here, I can turn on and off the thing. If I turn it off, it goes off. Turn it on, it's red for a little while. Now it's green, feeding power. This is the AC output over here. And what you do is you just connect it, plug it into the wall. And I have a kilowatt over here and you can see that it's feeding 93.7 watts in that way into my wall. So now I'm gonna do a test. I'm going to unplug this power strip from my wall over here. and you can see it turns off. So therefore, this thing is actually not feeding 110 volts back into this thing. Let me double check with a voltmeter. Now right here, it's red indicating something is wrong, which really is the AC is not plugged into the wall. But if I turn this on to AC, this represents a power line worker disconnecting the electricity. So this should be dead right now. Technically, you think the solar cells is injecting power into this thing. Therefore, it's feeding it all back in here. So this should be 110 volts. But if you measure it, you see, it's not feeding power in back into the grid right now because it is disconnected. So the thing that the, this grid tie inverter does is that it's sensing that there is 110 volts in here first and foremost before actually feeding power back in. So I'm gonna plug this back in. And it goes, oh yeah, you know, now there's live power. Because there's live power, we're gonna put power back in. All right, so if I disconnect this here, you shouldn't do that, it's kind of sparking. It goes, okay, yeah, there's no more power. But actually this power inverter, just because it's plugged in, it's drawing power from the outlet back in because it wants to power this thing itself. So I'm gonna plug this back in. So now it kind of ramps up, it goes, okay, 45, okay, let's, let's take on more power from the solar cells. This grid tie inverter tries to extract the most power. Therefore, the voltage across here, it's going to be at the optimal point at which it can extract the most power. So if I go and measure the DC voltage across here, it's not going to be 24 volts. It says 35 volts. So uh, 35 volts right now, it's optimal. If let's say this power inverter, it's not a maximal power point transfer uh, grid tie inverter, then the terminals over here might read 24 volts and the output power here might not be 75 watts. It might be something a lot lower, 40 watts. So the fact that this thing is going to adjust the voltage in order to try to get the most power out uh, means it's a maximum power transfer grid tie inverter. Just taking the kilowatt out of this whole system and measuring the AC, see? The AC here is not live. Should I touch it? Okay, see? <laughs> I'm not dead. Back in, we can see that the AC from the wall, 124 volts. Solar panels outside, it's generating about 104 watts going in here. Da -da -da. The AC cable, you know, goes all the way in here back into the wall, 105 watts. So I brought my solar panels in. There's no sun, so it reads 0.8 watts right now, uh, just so that we can see it inside over here. I'm looking at one of the panels, one of the stickers in the back. You can see it's a 
uh, 100 watt panel, but realistically, I'm only getting about 75 watts or so. 21.6 volt for open circuit, that is if you're not drawing any power from it. 17.9 volts, optimum voltage. That's why when you double this, it's about 36 volts, right? And this is what you see um, over here when I was measuring it just a little while ago. Now, each one of these panels is a 12 volt panel. And I went with a 24 volt system because I wanted to have less amount of connectors. My thinking was I could just connect this one over here. This signifies it's a series connection, right? Therefore, I only need two more connections over here to route to that inverter. This is the positive here. It goes through this. That's 12 volts already. This gets in series with this one. So this is 24 volt. Strings both of these together. That's why it's called in a series. Two cables. And what I had to do is buy these little pigtail things. It went from here to here. And I went and soldered speaker cables. I doubled them up over here and uh, connect it to the end of this thing. And mainly because I have speaker cables around and I have the ability to do the soldering, do shrink wrap and stuff. And actually buying a pigtail like this with 30 feet of cable is actually quite expensive. So I thought I would save some money by you know just attaching my own cable, uh, my own speaker cable here. So you can see I have, I don't know, about a length of this stuff. And then this goes all the way to what you saw before. Someone did mention in one of the comments, uh, maybe I shouldn't even address it because you know it's wrong, that if you connect two wires in parallel, the current actually goes through the one with the least amount of resistance. This is incorrect, it's actually proportional to it. And let's say one of the wires is you know, 0.001 ohm, a little bit less than other. It's not going to flow all the current on the lesser uh, resistance cable. So when I double these cables up, actually what's happening is half the current is gonna go uh, on one cable and half is gonna go to the other. So you can see, maybe you wanna see the front of this thing. I'm kind of surprised that um, it's gotten a little bit dirty because it's been outside about, has it been a month or something? You can actually go and check my video, how old it is, and uh, that'll tell you how, how long it's been out there. I was kind of surprised today because um, it was reading something like 140 watts, like the highest it's ever been. Um, even though I can see that the panels, it's a little dusty right now. You can see, I mean, wow. Um, so I'm gonna clean this up. So here's a diagram of it. I got two solar panels, 12 volt each, wired in series, technically 24 volt, uh, together, but optimally operates better at 36 volts. I have a 500 watt grid tie inverter. These things normally produce 70 watts or so, so it's way under uh, the 500 watt limit. The AC goes into my kilowatt so that I can measure how much energy it's pushing back into the wall. I have the wall over here and then it goes to the circuit breaker. After the circuit breaker, this goes to, you know, my utility meter and then from there on it goes back out to the grid typically in any county or something you do need to have a contract with your utility in order to push electricity back out or if you are connecting it like this you are connecting it to the grid because the circuit breaker is on and you are physically connected to the grid therefore you need a contract what i'm currently doing here is i am highly underpowering the solar system just so that I can play around with it, measure it. And the maximum I'll ever see coming out of the system is 150 watts. So technically, if I have a whole bunch of other stuff working in the home, for example, I have some lights, I have a stove going on, and let's say my lights is consuming 150 watts, okay? Very powerful lights, incandescent or something. Not that I have incandescent, but let's say 150 watts go into my wall of the same circuit in the house not going through the circuit breakers at all because within your house you have you know five ten different circuits that are on separate lines that can be disconnected from each other with a circuit breaker so 150 watts going in here and then my lights are consuming 150 watts you might actually want to put your own uh circuit breaker here but typically what happens is maybe in my house i'm not going to withdraw 150 watts right from the same circuit i have a whole bunch of other little things you know a couple watts here a couple watts there maybe my computer is somewhere else maybe i'm using a stove 
that's uh, 1000 watts. So what's gonna happen is since all these circuit breakers are on and stuff, it's generating 150 watts. It's actually gonna flow through here, out to the breaker, and then my stove is gonna consume, you know, all this 150 watts. And then because it doesn't have enough power, it's gonna take the rest from the utility company. So it's still gonna need, you know, 850 watts from the utility. Now what happens if I'm not using the stove, the lights are not on, nothing else is on, and the solar panels is on, and it's generating 150 watts. What's gonna happen is it's gonna go whoop and then go, you know, push it back to the utility. So what happens if the utility workers want to work on this piece of the wiring over here? So they cut the electricity over here, and they think all of this is not powered. But what happens is this grid tie inverter goes, hey, there's, there's no 110 volt voltage that's coming in all the way here. Therefore it goes, okay, the power is turned off. So we're not gonna push any power back out. Therefore the utility workers uh, cutting power to here, they are safe. If you use a grid tie inverter that actually has this feature and the one I use that I've tested does have this feature. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this was helpful. If you guys are interested in the products that I use, I'll leave a link down in the video description below. Again, if you want to grid tie to your utility companies, you actually need a contract with them. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below, push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.